What is going on, everyone? I am Mitchell Harusi, your host. And I'm Parker Grinnett, one of your co-hosts here. And I'm Matt Volts over here in the booth. And now we have a great show for you guys. We had a great weekend of football in general. But before we get into that, Matt has a message from Fredonia. I sure do. Well, if you go to this show, make sure you have your cowboy boots for square dancing because Last Call Entertainment is presenting folk music in Fredonia. High Noon Friday, the variety radio show of 40 years from Fredonia Radio Systems, is hosting the event. Bands and artists that are playing are Milkweed and the Hartwell Hospice House Band, Wiley Something and Affliction, Two Peas in a Pod, and Jacob Kantner. The music is at BJ's at 51 West Main Street, Fredonia, on November 30th. Doors are at 9 p.m., and music is at 10 p.m. That is this Thursday. Thank you, Matt. And now we'll get right into it. Bill's. Bills lost a heartbreaker, heartbreaker, 37 to 34. Bills fall to six and six on the year. The Eagles, I don't know if we want to say improve. I think they're frauds, but they are 11 or 10 and one now. You think the Eagles are frauds? I don't know. I don't know if I think they're frauds. Okay. I just okay. don't know if I think their record is as good. I think no, there's their record's not as good as they are. Guys, what happened? Oh, wait, should I start off with my breaking news, Matt? I think you should. I, I think you should. So Mitch told me earlier today that he had some sort of breaking news. I don't know what it is, but I'm interested to hear it. All right. Breaking news out of Fredona, New York, McEwen Hall. I think I'm officially off the Sean McDermott train. Oh, that so is, you're like totally off news. the train. I think it's time to move on. I okay. think we've plateaued. Okay. That, that's in my brand, but I'll let you guys tell me oh, when boy. you want me to go on this one. Oh, boy. <sighs> can we, we're going to put a time limit on it, Parker. Okay. Yeah, I, I, can, I can do it in like... Two minutes, maybe three at most. Well, do we start with that or? Okay, let, let's know. let's dissect the game first, and okay, then we'll yeah, let yeah, Parker yeah. We'll let me go get in little. touch with his emotional side. There we go. Um, We're all getting in touch with our emotional side. This is what we do on the show. <laughs> yeah, Matt, Matt has extra emotional side on the show today. I got oh uh, I got oh a boy. double helping of devastating football losses this weekend. It was. It was, just, it, was a, it was a bad weekend for Matt. Yes, we'll it was, it it was about as bad of a sports weekend as you could possibly imagine. Sabres just dropped the puck, by the way. They what? Say, they, they just dropped they the just, puck. They just started. started. Matt, we are four minutes in. I what are you talking about? You're He's watching minutes. the game I'm on his the computer. Game. Oh, right you're watching? Oh, Look. oh. I just pull up. I have, I have ESPN up, and it says, oh, and it just jumped ahead. Because it said 19 minutes and like 40 seconds left or whatever. And so I was like, oh, geez, okay. I Matt, guess you want to take a look to your left real quick? I, oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, here's here's my biggest reason for the Sean McDermott train coming to a halt for me personally. Pulling out of the station. So, three times this year we have scored under two minutes ago in the game to put us up. We've lost all three of those games. Mm-hmm. All three yeah. of those games. This is a defensive coach. This is a defensive-minded head coach. Why is our offense putting – ourselves or the offense of putting the team in spots to win where you say, okay, uh, yeah, the injuries, I understand the injuries, but injuries aren't causing you to run shell drop coverage on a third and four. Yeah. The offense does it, but you know why the defense lets it up because on in four of their six losses, they've given up a tying or go ahead drive in the final two minutes. They just four of the six losses. And this isn't just going back. I went not deep into the, into the archives, but yeah, I hear you. A couple though. years back, 2019, first year, uh, well, second year of Josh Allen's career, third and 18 in overtime in the Texans. What did Deshaun Watson do? <sighs> break it, break a sack, get That's what 25 game. yards to Tywan Jones. We loot the game in overtime. Yeah, former and future Bill at that point, Tywan <laughs> Jones. <laughs> yep, he's in the middle uh, of his Bills tenures. 2020. I mean, I don't really have any games that come to mind where this happened, but. Yeah, I, get I mean the Hail Mary the championship. Yeah, I could well the Hail Mary, the, the Hail Mary was just kind of a that was just a miracle. Yeah. play. Um, you know, there I was think, nothing yeah. that they could have really done about that except maybe knock the that was ball my, down. Uh, my opinion yeah. was that I think Hyde or White one of them had the pick and Poyer interfered with the pick because he came in late. But oh, yeah, that, three that, guys jumped that, up. That, that was my down, opinion yeah. that Poyer came in too late and yeah. kind of disrupted that yeah. play a little bit. But and then so yeah, twenty twenty that the Hail Mary is about the only thing Hail Murray. My bad. Yeah. And then. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 2021, you know. <clears throat> take your pick for that year. Yeah, take your pick exactly. But, you know, you can point out 13 seconds. That's yep. the one. And then, yeah, 13 seconds left in the game. You let them go down with one timeout, and 
set him up for, well, see, like a 50 yarder is an easy field goal, especially for a kicker like, um, yeah, Harrison Bucker. Oh my, for Harrison, the I just completely. No, I got his you. Name. Yeah, I couldn't remember if you were talking about last <laughs> night or if you were talking about nah, 13 seconds. 21. And then last year, 2022, fourth and 18, game of the year, oh. fourth and 18. We let Justin Jefferson do literally witchcraft. To this day, I swear I thought Cam knew, Cam Lewis knocked that ball down. Yeah, I, yeah, I was I was at that game, and I was like, at the stadium went, ooh, like that's literally exactly, that was the sound it made. It that is exactly, and, what. and Parker can attest to this, when the Bills lost to the Broncos oh. on Monday night a couple weeks ago, <laughs> that is exactly what happened when Will Lutz first missed that field goal. I jumped up, I was like, yes, let's go, we won. And then I looked around, I was like, wait, why is nobody else celebrating? <laughs> What's going on here? And then, then, yeah. and then they saw the laundry on the field and were like, you got to be <laughs> yep. kidding me. Um, so, yeah, 4th and 18, you know, you close out a game and then you let up that. And then this year, you have you score minute 58 left against the Patriots. You let Matt Jones go 75 oh. yards and Matt he scores just 12 seconds left. so the, many times. He's Matt four Jones. times, I think. Yeah. Isn't it four? Was it four? I he, got got so? he got benched again uh, against yeah, the yeah, Giants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Bailey Zappi came back in. Um. And then, you know, Broncos game, minute 55 left. You let Denver go 57-yard, kick a game-winning field goal. And then last night, minute 52 left, and then set up a game. I mean, granted, if you could go back about, like, a 59-yard field goal in those conditions are about as good as a position you can kind of put your defense in. But, yeah. you know, third and four, I get the whole, you know, don't give up the touchdown. It's third and four. Yeah. Why are you letting them get the first down in this position? Like it's yeah, not it's not one yeah. of these like oh if they like it's like you need to get like just, I don't just stop them. Why are you running like, soft coverage? The defense yeah, is working be pretty much the entire game, and then all of a sudden <laughs> we're just gonna play our. You know, they can win a game with a touchdown. Right. If they lay back. But into that, why? Yeah. Why do we want to tie? Why would we just don't let them tie the game? You win the game. Mm-hmm. It's coaching not to lose instead of coaching to win. And I've seen that a lot. That's, recently that's with the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing I yep. have is that. Yep. And he, he even said it yesterday, like when we and this is a very I don't know how I feel. I'm so torn on the decision to take the knee with 20 seconds left. I hate it. Nope. I don't like it. He and it's. It's so, like, yeah, 20 seconds left, you know, the, their D-line is one of the best in the leagues. They, you know, that's a good team, but you have Josh Allen. Exactly, and, and your you, offensive line played excellently last amazing. night. Amazing, they had lit up yeah. one sack. And I'll take this away out of my rant. Here's my reason that I hate that decision the most. Detroit last year at Thanksgiving, oh, 25 yeah. seconds, Grand Street. We had two timeouts then versus one. What does Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs do? Connect for the field goal. Got the play, timeout immediately. Yep. They still ran one more play, get a little bit better range. It's pretty much the same exact condition. Obviously, the weather was different inside, outside. But, I mean, Allen obviously showed that it didn't showed that matter. He could have done yep. it last night. Joe Brady would have called the play that I guarantee you probably would have been good. They were able to get Shakir open down the field. Kincaid, why? You have the touch. You have the t- timeout. Throw it downfield. Get right on the edge of the range, run one more play, out of bounds, boom. Right. You have the option. Why do you refuse to do it? I just, and the biggest thing is, like, I don't think he came out and said this, but it's like, he doesn't have trust. But yet, this is your quarterback that's worth $250 million. Yeah. You grant you Bass did miss two, but still, let's say he misses a third. Okay, it looks terrible for a statue, but you tried. Yeah, the one was just, you know, another Jalen Carter decides to be... (laughs) Godsend somehow. <laughs> Jesus, not he good. Human. My gosh, not human. He is good. You know, yeah, good thing we I don't blame Bass for the block, but you know. ninth. No, but Ugh. yeah, we're tenth in the AFC now. Buffalo is Woo. one and tenth four place. on the road. <laughs> well, yeah, one and four on the road. I mean, you're six and six with this much talent. It just absolutely cannot happen. And another thing that I've seen, like some of the like the crossover between Saber Twitter and Bills Twitter. Is it's which is crazy that that's a separate thing. <laughs> it's a fun place to be. It's a fun place to be. <laughs> yeah. But, um, like the Saber people are like, oh, like be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Like you know, Pagula he hasn't hired anyone to make the Saber good. You can't be satisfied with okay, we're a team. Exactly. We're a team that can can win some games and make the playoffs. This is 
a top two quarterback. When he's playing like he's playing last night, he is on par with Mahomes. Absolutely. He is mm-hmm. otherworldly. You can't have this. You can't have your coach be a, uh, we're not playing to lose. Yeah. You play to win. You play to win the game. When you have a quarterback like that. It's the Herman Edwards quote. Literally, yeah. You, you, play, you play to, to win, the, win game. the game. That's what it is. I, just, I don't understand how you can have that quarterback, have him looked as good as he looked yesterday. I think that's his best game all year by far. And he just take it out of his hands. Even and then in overtime, fourth and six, go for it. I'm 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 not against. You've going been able for to it. drive down the field the mm-hmm. entire overtime period. Yeah, if you're saying okay, we're just we're at that point, you're saying okay, we're playing for the tie, or yep. you know their offense has been amazing in the fourth quarter. You cannot do anything to stop them in the fourth quarter, and you know Josh Allen was a madman this entire game, especially the second half, and then you're gonna, you're just gonna say. You know what? We're we're okay with taking these points. Yeah, I I think in that position you can't you can't be okay. I agree. I I also just think Gabe Davis at the end just runs his route. If he just looks up, mm. looks back, he's gonna see the ball. He could have make he was was wide enough open. He could have made that adjustment. I think. That that's another one of those. I it's don't think you can one. put the blame on anyone. I don't think you can put no because but yeah. I just think I don't know. That's just something. Yeah, it's one of those option wide receiver routes where like he could either like run a corner or just like keep going straight the way he's going. And it just I think Josh thought he was going one way, Gabe went the other way, and it's just I also think based yeah. on Allen's reaction that it was meant to go. Well it may have been. What what they talked about and what Gabe said is like and then Dan Rovlowski said this too, is if if you're in they knew they had Philly playing zero coverage, you know, it's man now man up, everyone who isn't guarding someone is rushing the quarterback. That's all it is. Normally, if you can beat your guy, you look in because it's easier to, you know, yep. throw an in-breaking route than an out-breaking route. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then Gabe Davis said after the game, they said, like, you know, you guys have been playing together for four years. Shouldn't that be a very simple read? He said, yeah, it should be. For some reason, we just couldn't we couldn't do it. And it's just, I just don't understand. That's just, you just have to, you have to, oh, did they score? Yeah, the Rangers did. Oh, man. I've got it on in here, too. <laughs> um, as much of a football show as this might be, we're still Sabres fans. Go anymore. Sabres. Yeah. Yay. But... I mean, I don't know. That's just, you can't blame anyone. You can just question why they weren't on the same page. Right. I don't know if that goes on coaching. I don't know if that goes on Allen or Gabe. I just, you just, you just have to complete that play. Yep. That's a touchdown. I hear you. That's a game winner. We're, yep. should be seven and five right now looking into should our Should be better week. than that in theory, right? We should be. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Could be like 10 and two right now, honestly. Should be. Yeah, with how should. talented they are and with how close their losses have been. The arguments there that this could be like a ten to two football team right now. Pain. And here we are. That's all I know. I'm waiting to see if we're just gonna, we're just gonna when we're gonna let Parker loose or. <laughs> Parker, I, you have until seven thirty at the latest. Okay. All right. Fine. That you gave me about the, what three I, four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. At the latest. You okay. have the floor, Parker. <laughs> I thought my last one was bad. Here we go. This is this is my complete opinion based here. He yeah. got he got this written. He had the script. I have a script, have a and script. I have like lots word of for word. He here. has it written out. <laughs> this is an absolutely inexcusable loss. Yes. Okay. Refs could not have shown any more bias. Which also, I think that the biasness of refs and the blatant missed calls and garbage has gone up exponentially since sport betting was widely legalized. I think mm. somebody really needs to take a look at this take, here. Good take. Not exactly. Does it should it be blamed on one person? This is a kind of a team accountability loss in a way. Yeah, Bass missed two field goals. Cook dropped a wide open touchdown pass. And what do we do on that drive? Pump the ball. And then on a Bass missed field goal, you have the lead referee, Sean Hokelly. Hockley. Sean Hockley. Uh, Sean Hockley, sorry. Son of Ed the Hockley. great Ed Hockley. Most rip rep of Staring all, one of the best at refs Hassan ever. Reddick on what is a blatant horse collar tackle. Yeah. Tweeted word for word here. If I can pull it up here. Uh, which one is it? Here it is. <laughs> he got so many by, tweets on dash. By, by Gene Sterator. Horse collar, collar penalty. If the quarterback is in the pocket, there cannot be a penalty for a horse collar tackle. However, once he leaves the pocket, he is offered that protection. He is out of the pocket by a mile. He should have been called for a foul on this play for the illegal horse collar tackle. And yet, we're staring right at the play. 
Which, not to mention, by the way, the Eagles are 4-0 and with Sean Hockey Lee as their five ref. And yeah, 5-0. Five five and and five and now 5-0 since yeah. Nick Sirianni was hired, by the yep. way. Yep. First half penalties was 10 on the Bills for 75 yards and one on the Eagles for five. So many blatant missed calls. Why don't we talk about missed calls? Why don't we call talk about the P.I. on Diggs, the P.I. on Trent Sherfield? Oh. Those are blatant calls. You see the refs in these photos looking right at them. 505 total yards of offense and we lose. 20 seconds end the game, like I said, the Detroit thing. Josh Allen accounts for five, 413 of our total 505 yards and all four of our touchdowns, and yet we lose the game. I have another little mention here. So the Bills are the 40th team since 1970 to have 500 yards, 10 third down conversions, and a positive turnover margin. They're the first team to lose the game. <laughs> wow. They are the first team to Wait, lose. Wait, what was it, 500 yards? 500 oh. yards. 10 third down conversions, and a positive turnover margin. Teams are now 39-1 and one because we lost. Let's go. Wow. Let's go, guys. So, Making I mean, history. why don't we talk Woo. about um, how Sean McDermott at the end of the game comes in and says, we came in, fought our blanks off, fill in the blank here, came out on the short right. end. Everyone has to look at this themselves. It starts with me. No, Sean, it does start with you. Really? Thanks for stating the obvious. Goodbye. You are on the hot seat. Frank Reich's gone already. It is getting warmer. You are gone. Bye-bye. Here's the thing. We lose Sean McDermott. Do we lose Joe Brady, too? Because he's proved that he should be the offensive coordinator. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, oh, why don't we just make how, how, how we're going to rebuild better <laughs> next year. We're projected to be negative $29 million in the cap next year. Yeah, I saw that. So, yeah, there we go on that one. <laughs> Um, oh, and here's another one I thought was hilarious. I'm fully convinced that the city of Buffalo is a science expand to see how much stress that people can take in a lifetime and try to survive. <laughs> yeah. And here's what tips it all off. Sean Hockey at the end of the game told reporters the crew made absolutely no errors. Oh, Sabres just scored, by the way. Also, the Rangers didn't oh. score. Yeah, they waved it off. Yeah. Ooh, so, sorry, by camera, so it's my a one nothing goal by JJ Paterka here. PD. Um, sorry, we love the Sabres. Year here. I think just the last point I want to make is that if your announcers are calling five, at least five times that the refs are making bad calls yeah, should be addressed. And here's a great one to end this all. <laughs> Can't wait to see how Sean Hockley is fine for missing blatant horse collar and two defensive pass interferences on Slay. Oh, wait, the NFL officiating crew is part-time and held accountable by absolutely no one. Yeah. Thank you, Parker. It's true. But applause. And positive news. We, we had a scoregami game yesterday, 29 we did. That we did. That we did. If there's did. any redeeming quality about this weekend for sports, it's that we did get scoregami. So it's, you know, we'll take it. So, so like 1,046 yeah. or something? It's 1081. Oh, 1081. 1081. Oh, wow. 1081st. Different score. So wow. if you don't know what scoregami is, it's a Twitter account. Absolutely. That it's tracks beautiful. beautifully new scores. So, like, this is the first time that, like, when Denver beat – the Browns, 29-12. It's the first time that that score has yep. ever happened. It's the 1,081st different NFL scoring combination. And during, if you go on their Twitter, you can track, like, during the game, the percentages this game has to end in score. Got me the best. Like, whoever is doing this, genius. It's my favorite account. Absolutely. My favorite account on Twitter. Absolutely. Um, do we want to hear a word from our local station yes, before we, we move on? Yes, we will take a word. We will be back in roughly 30 seconds. You can't get enough of WCVF 88.9, can you? Well, in that case, you should check us out on the Fredonia Radio YouTube channel. We upload some of our weekly shows as well as some exclusive content. Listen to the new stuff as well as the old. Search Fredonia Radio on YouTube and subscribe now. And we're back live on the fifth quarter. Welcome back, everyone. All righty. Now we're going to keep the ball moving as it has nice. not moved since we have started the show. But we're going to right. start moving it. Um, Jaguars and Texans in yeah. what seems to be the new norm in the AFC North for some reason. Just an absolute nail-biter. Jaguars beat the Texans 24-21. to 21. The Jaguars are now 8-3 and three on the year, 5-0 and on the road. And the Texans that. are 6-5. and five. Is this the new... Rivalry in the NFL, like not not team, but Trevor right. Lawrence, CJ Stroud. Is this the new elite quarterback matchup? That's the new my practice with. They're rivalry good. Rivalry here. Yes, there you go. It is. You got it. I spent some time practicing that this weekend during the games. I think it is. I think it is. I think the matchup is CJ Stroud is just it. Which in the next part, it makes you wonder: Did the Panthers make the right choice here? But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I, I feel bad because DJ Stroud put together, a, you know, he had a couple rookie mistakes, a couple sacks at the end of the game. I was watching sure. the end of that game. But, oh, so close. That ball was a yard short of being that game-winning field so goal. Close. Or game-tying, sorry. But I think that these two teams, they're, they're going to be battling for quite a while. Absolutely. And it's definitely one of those up-and-coming, new-developed, and I think, I think it's great, too, for the NFL. I I was, oh, wait, you want to go real quick? Or are you gonna no, I was something? just saying I agree. Oh, Absolutely. And then, you know, you have these two teams, then you throw in AR-15, and the Colts, oh. the Colts are 6-5. and five. Yes. And with Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew. I know. What a shame it is that he got injured. He mm-hmm. was playing some great football when he You're going to throw you're gonna yeah. throw him in the mix with Shane Sykin looks to be yeah. an elite head coach. Yeah. And then, I mean, Titans, you got Will Levis, who is. Once the Titans he's definitely can, playing yes, he's football. Figured, once the Titans can get a little bit figured out here, they're, they're kind of in that rebuilding right now. Yeah. They're going to go into that. This conference could just become very, very fun. That could be Which what everyone so thought. Which is so weird because that was like the bottom, that was like the, like the laughing bottom stock. barrel of the league. Yeah, the mm-hmm. laughing stock for a while. That was, now it could be the best? What many people obviously thought going into this season, the AFC East would be like what the yep. AFC South is looking like. Those young quarterbacks in the AFC South, they, they look good. They look they really good. look great. And then, do we think C.J. Stroud is maybe not the MVP, but do we think he's he's up there? I think he's proven himself I every think single not week in the MVP conversation. One hundred percent offensive rookie of the year. I oh, would yeah. go as far as to say that he has offensive rookie of the year. Yeah, yeah. Right I think now. I think pretty much he's locked that up yep. at this point. Puka was Tank corrupt. Dell. I think should be in consideration, and as is as is Puka Nakua. Which I didn't said. know that when they drafted Stroud, they asked what receiver do you want us to tank, take, and he said Tank. I didn't realize that he told them to take oh, really? Tank Dell. I was That's reading cool. it um, online. Wow. They said, That's awesome. "Who do you want us to take in the second round?" He goes, "I want Tank Dell." And they listened and took Tank. I mean, look at that. It's becoming one of the I more the Bills elite. To take Tank Dell, man. Yeah. Your name I'm is sure. Tank. You have to be good at football. I'm sure right Although, now. Uh, talk about wide receivers. He probably wants Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Did you see what uh, Keon Coleman said about Josh Allen? I did not. Nah. He um he said Josh Allen leaves it all out on the field, and he's just when it when it's finally somebody else's turn to help t- turn to help him make a play. Nobody's there. Are you talking about future Buffalo Bill mm. Keon Coleman? I think I am. I think he wants to go to the Bills. <laughs> okay. Someone him. Okay. Roma Duze. Literally uh, anyone Roma else, Duse. man. Malik Neighbors, as an SEC football fan, I can tell you Malik Dude, Neighbors is pretty those good. Those ones are those two. It's uh, Malik Neighbors, and who's the other one? The, his uh, other on the and other side. Number eight, and number eleven. Ah, oh, man. Uh, I just was reading about oh, their yeah. their season is pretty much My team better than Jamar LSU Chase. And, uh, yes, the, yeah. Malik Neighbors is actually like set records that not even like Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson did at LSU. Uh, who is the other one? I the one, I, I can't remember what stat it was, but there was a record he broke that was an LSU receiver that previously had this record at the school that you're probably not going to believe who it was. It was not Odell Beckham Jr. or Jarvis Landry or Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase. Their previous record holder, and again, I can't remember what stat it was, was former Buffalo Bill Josh Reed. What? I don't remember what the stat was, but Malik Neighbors like broke it. By the way, it's Brian Thomas starting on the other side. Of Brian me. Thomas, ah, okay. Yeah. Josh Reed, there's a that, name. That, yeah, Let me tell you, Josh right Reed, close. elite slot receiver on NFL 2K5. Unbelievable. <laughs> what a oh, game. my gosh, incredible. ESPN NFL 2K5. Yes, I did a Bills TO franchise mode a while back. Oh, my gosh, it was insane. Well, I traded for Anquan Bolden, too. <laughs> so I had Eric Molds and Anquan Bolden on the outside. I traded Lee Evans for him. So I had Molds yes. and Bolden on the outside. Josh Reed is like a 76 overall. Dude catches everything in the slot. He consistently has like 95 yard games every week. I'm like, what? My uh, my Xbox One, like the original Xbox, started <laughs> yes. or stopped working a little while ago. It's, it's the saddest thing of all time. We got ESPN 2K5. We got Madden 05. Well, we got t- like Tiger Woods Golf oh. 05. It's well, I will say, so sad. 2K5 does work on the Xbox 360 though. That is great information that I will use. That's how I play it. Very, I will use that. Yeah. Thank you, oh, Matt. Yeah, yeah. That, this is great information. Yeah, it's, it's I I believe that it is the best NFL video game ever created. Dude, you go to the crib. You have the crib. The crib, amazing. Oh my goodness, dude. awesome. I'm getting fired up right now. I love the 25th anniversary when you can replay. I have replayed wide right and led the Bills down the field and had like capped it off with a Thurman Thomas touchdown run probably a hundred times. <laughs> And I've replayed the comeback against the Oilers probably even more than that. Back when they used to put actual thought yes. into those video games. It was brilliant. It was, it was amazing. The win. Madden ruined it. Man. Man. 
Well, you know, you said constantly having 95-yard receivers, right? I did. You know who I bet you wishes he would constantly have a 95-yard receiver right now? Who? Bryce Young. <sighs> what a oh. what a transition, Parker. That was beautiful. Very good transition. Do, 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 do. Speaking of Bryce Young, Frank Reich fired. Yeah, this it was morning. We could have even had that segue with when I said I replayed the comeback. Speaking of, ah, oh, we could have. Could have. Yeah. yeah. Think about that. So yeah, Frank Wright. What is it? Eleven games and he's done. Jeez. One in ten. Yeah. I don't know if you can completely blame him for this. I mean, who does Bryce Young have to support? I don't think you can. I mean, that, that defense is think? a revolving door of injuries yeah. all season. They and Bryce Young has roster. nobody to help him besides what Adam Thielen. Yeah. I you showed, have nobody on that roster. I showed Matt a clip of Jonathan Mingo trying to catch a ball on the sideline. And <laughs> dropping it. That was hilarious. No, he caught the ball, but he act of he it's running like a like a rollout. He's running like a dig or whatever, and he jumps to catch the ball. But if this is the sideline, right? He's yeah. running this way. He jumps and flips his feet as if the sideline the other way. <laughs> I, I got to show you the clip because it's a funny thing. It was I've awesome. Seen. It was unbelievable. I was like, <laughs> how in sense. the world do you not get at least one foot in bounds? It's like the, the George Pickens one. Yeah. Where George Pickens has six yards of room. He and didn't get a single. This guy didn't even get a single foot in bounds. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Parker. Oh, I got to watch. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're watching this. Boom. He's like, but where does he think he's backwards. going? Why is he jumping out of bounds? He literally jumped out. Dude, of you got bounds. paid millions of dollars to catch the ball inbounds, not on the white paint. He oh. ju- like he jumps to avoid landing inbounds. It's the literally, funniest thing. I've that's ever a completion, seen. and if he runs up field, that's a couple. That's yards after catch. Any, yes, any, any person oh, yeah. that's a completion. This man trying not to catch <laughs> the ball. This yeah. guy is like, yeah, you know what? I want Frank Reich fired. <laughs> it's so funny. Literally, I mean, the Bills did that one time. They got a, they played so badly, they got their coach fired. Which one was that? It was Hank Bullo, right before Marv Levy. It's a true story. It was 1986, and fifth quarter football knowledge. It's it's. <laughs> I had to drop one knowledge bomb before we before we left. But yeah, it it was 1986. Will Wolford, who was the starting left tackle of the Bills uh, Super Bowl teams, uh, he was on a podcast like five or six years ago, and he was telling a story that when he was a rookie in '86. Um, the Bills, remember, they were coming off back-to-back 2-14 and 14 seasons. This was Jim Kelly's first year with the Bills, too. And they hated Coach Bullo so much that they, the veteran players intentionally played poorly. And they told the rookies, they were like, if you play well. Like, they threatened them. They were like, if you play well, like, it's not going to end well for you. And they were playing against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who were also horrible. And they knew... That it because Tampa was the worst team in the league. They knew that if they lost to Tampa, Hank Bullo was going to get fired. So they intentionally played poorly, and Hank Bullo got fired, and the Bills hired Marv Levy, and the rest is history. That, that's amazing. It's the best story I've ever heard. That's amazing. It's up there. Because so, he won his first game. He literally, like, Marv had the easiest job in the world in his first game. All he had to do was just be there, and he was better than Hank Bullo because everybody <laughs> hated him. And he they won his first game. They beat the Steelers. Nice. So back to Frank Reich after Matt dropped. Yes, that, he was that's on that a, that's team. That's a great. Well. That's actually that's a, a great story. That is, yeah, that's that a good tip. How do you like that story? He so, was on that team. Frank was. He was. Um, what like what the plan? What the direction for the Panthers? Honestly, they have no direction. The rest of the, the season's over. But like next yeah, year, one in ten. Like, I mean, how do you how do you navigate? Who, who do you anything? want to coach? I mean, it just I don't know. Yeah, and, and what players from the outside you think like free agency or Nobody whatever? Wants to go who's going to want to go down to Carolina? They've been so bad the last. Maybe few if years. they won some good games here, and you know, but yeah, just because they haven't won, it's like okay, well, Bryce can't win on games. I don't want to go play with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I don't know. I don't think it, it, it's going to be it's going to be rough for Carolina the next probably for a while. And you probably. know, reminder, they traded their first round pick. Yes, yeah, that even worse. Probably to the Bears, would yep. be number one this year. More than likely. And they don't have it. And they don't yeah, have a second round pick for next year. They'll probably yeah. be who are they even want to you're 34? not gonna go draft a first cute. So who do you, who if you had the first overall pick, if you're Carolina, who do you Marvin take? Harrison Jr. Mar- okay, yeah. If yeah. you're Carolina, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But they I mean if you're the Bears, and that's a whole nother question. If you're what's Chicago gonna do if they get the number one pick? We might have to talk about that. They, next they're week. Gonna have that might, that might be they're a next week have... conversation. That might even be a draft week conversation. Yeah, true. we, we got to discuss it. what we're going to do in the spring. Absolutely, we, we do. Absolutely, we do. Get the layout and everything. Um, but yeah, they have. Know, we only got 15 minutes. So they're losing Brian Burns. He's an under yep. free agent. 
Yeah, Derek he's Brown's not coming back. Entering the last year of his contract, he's going to need an extension. But why would he extend? Jeremy Chin, unrestricted free agent. They just they have no core. Their core yep. is what Chuba Hubbard and Bryce Young, and maybe Adam Thielen. Yeah. I don't and Adam Thielen's, what, old Adam 32, Thielen? something yeah. like that, or 31, something? That's your core? I mean, you got J.C. Horn. He's hurt. Yeah, yeah. Like, you have you have nothing. Yeah, you're— right? You you're, have no you're stepping in, stones for your team. In the best terms, you're screwed. Yeah, you just— Yeah, you're, you're not in good shape at all. I just—and, I, I, yeah, like, it's just an ugly job opening. There's it nothing is. that really you is. could go there for where it's going to be like, ooh, this is interesting. It's just not, like— I think the general consensus, consensus, and yeah. that was a tough word. No, I got you. <laughs> um, I, I think everyone thought Stroud was better. The coaches thought Stroud was better, but for some reason, the owner was like, "Nah, Bryce Young." Yeah, and you're gonna fire the coach because you made the wrong decision. Yeah, I just I don't know that owner. I've heard bad things about that owner. He took over the team in 2018, I believe, and I think so. They have not done anything. No. I mean, Bryce Young played at a not to you know do that, but Bryce Young played at a school that typically historically does not produce great quarterbacks. This is true. Yeah. Yep. This is true. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I just I can't imagine being a fan of any Carolina team, really. <sighs> Maybe the Hurricanes. Yeah, the Hurricanes are doing pretty well. Shout out my friend, my friend Olivia. Kind of. Hurricanes fan. They could be doing better, honestly, this year. They could be. Hey, did you see the stat that 15 different uh, Lightning scored a point against them in their last game? Yeah, it was at what, 8-2? 15 different players scored a point. 15 different players scored a point. That's insane. Yep. Uh, Speaking of hockey, it's end of the first. Sabres are up 1-0, by the way. Nice, nice. We own Igor Shizurkin. Um, But yeah, we're going to move on to college football. But before we do that, we have a message from the radio station. Yeah, we'll take just a uh, short, real quick break and be back in roughly 15 seconds. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. At the tone, please record your message. Hey, I'm just going to let you know that you're listening to WCVF 88.9 The Voice. And welcome back to the fifth quarter. And we are back. Parker just asked uh, why we didn't, why we're not talking about his team in college football. Uh, yeah, we beat Vanderbilt. We do, I just want, so I just I want mean, to put it out there. That's why we're not school. talking about your team because you beat Vanderbilt. We, yeah, we apologize to do all the listeners. Do you want a sticker? Even Auburn beat Vanderbilt this year, dude. We're going to apologize to all the <laughs> listeners for not reaching on or not touching on Tennessee Vanderbilt. Sorry, everyone. I know, they won. That's I, I know all everyone was tuned really in. Care. It's a pressing issue in college football, you know. <laughs> um, Talk about the good pressing issue is what's going to happen. Talk about the good game. So, yeah, it was was a sad day for me. Sad day for my boy Jack. You want to talk about having a sad day? (laughs) All right, we'll we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to Matt's (laughs) Matt's having a sad off over here. It's a sad weekend. Um, Michigan beats Ohio State 30-24 to without Jim Harbaugh. Michigan now 12-0 on the year. We'll probably move up to number two in the college football playoff rankings. And Ohio State will likely drop out of the top four. Yeah, it, they will. Michigan has moved to the betting favorite to win the national championship. They, I think, believe they are now plus 180. Are they the favorite? Do you guys think they are the favorite to win it? I think if you look at the other teams, at a, I'm guessing the top four will be Georgia, Michigan, Washington, Florida State. Well, I think it's going to, yeah. Maybe Penn State. I think it's going to depend no, on who Penn wins State? the Pac-12 championship. No, sorry, I'm not thinking Penn. Um, <laughs> it's going to depend on who wins I'm the Pac-12. I'm thinking Alabama because they're going to somehow okay. find a way. Sorry, I, yeah. I was thinking Don't put I was thinking of the Penn State Don't game put that for some existence. reason. No, if they put Alabama in, I'm not watching it. It's, it'll be a repeat of 2017 when Alabama lost the game, didn't even play in the SEC championship, and yet made the playoff. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think Michigan's beatable. I think Georgia, I think Oregon can beat them. And, yeah, and, and I think it'll depend who wins the Pac-12 championship. That is Washington the, or Oregon, I think whoever wins that game gets in. Yeah, that is going to be uh, yeah. arguably one of the game, games, one of the games totally. of the year. Totally, it will be. And then I will say, obviously I'm biased, but it is still possible. Ohio State could make it in. They could. They could. They can make they it could. in. It would be it would be very similar to like I said, Alabama twenty seventeen. They didn't have a single loss until their last game of the year where they lost to the Auburn Tigers. <laughs> and and that was that was the tiebreaker for Auburn went to the SEC championship and got blown out. 
And Alabama, they said, well, Bama only has one loss, and it was on the road to the number six ranked team in the country. So they got in. Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't think, obviously, Michigan it can win it. I Again, I'm biased. I try not to show my bias with the Bills, but I hate Michigan, so I don't care. Um, J.J. McCarthy just is not I – don't I don't think he's a quarterback that can win you a championship. What did he throw for, like 130 yards or something? He had 148. Great. Yeah. 16 for 20, 148, one touchdown. If you get a lead on this team, which granted is a lot easier said than done, their, yeah, defense, their defense is, is unbelievable. But you put him in position to throw the ball and have to put the ball down the field, he's not going to come back. He can't. And, I mean, like, obviously he did it on the TCU defense in the college football playoff last year. That's TCU's defense. Anyone can score on TCU's defense. But, <laughs> it's, I, like, he just, against, Mich- or against Ohio State, he didn't have a drive. He didn't have a play where you can look at yeah. it and be like, hmm, that J.J. McCarthy right. showing off. That J.J. McCarthy going off. Like, he just didn't. He didn't have his Reggie Miller moment. <laughs> no, he didn't. Um... Yeah, Shout we'll keep out. it moving because I want to talk about championship weekend, get some previews in. Yes, yes. So, Matt. Here you are, Matt. <sighs> Here we are. So, well, any, what happened, Matt? I'll just let you. So I have any, in my notes. Matt, Matt, you have the floor. For any listeners who might not be familiar, I am, and I won't talk too long about this because I understand it probably doesn't pertain to many of our listeners, but I am an Auburn Tigers fan. I've been an Auburn Tigers fan since I was nine years old. And, yes, I know, mistakes were made when I was nine. Um <laughs> So the Iron Bowl is like the one game a year that I just go absolutely nuts for. I would go as far as to say that I carry more disdain in my heart for the Alabama Crimson Tide football program than I do for any sports team ever, period. I despise them more than I despise like the Miami Dolphins or the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Chicago Cubs. I don't like the Cubs either. I'm a Cardinals fan, but sorry, Mason. Sorry, yeah, our friend Mason's a Cubs fan. We go back and forth about it. But so the Iron Bowl on Saturday, listen, crazy things always happen in Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn. When Alabama plays Auburn, historically, 2017, Auburn beat them. 2019, Auburn beat them. 2021, Auburn playing with a, a backup quarterback who was playing on one leg, who wasn't very good to begin with. They took Alabama, number three ranked team in the country, unbeaten with Heisman winning Bryce Young at quarterback. Auburn took them to four overtimes two years ago. This year, Auburn kept it close. It was, you know, early on, it looked bad. The officiating, I'm not kidding. This game played out almost exactly the same way that the Bills-Eagles game did. It was literally like getting deja vu yesterday because there were several penalties. So there was one play in particular. Auburn was returning a punt. And Brian Batty was returning it for Auburn. Or no, it was, a, it was a kickoff after Alabama's first touchdown of the game. And so Brian Batty for Auburn was returning this kickoff. The Alabama, I, I forget who it was. Was it, was it uh, Kendrick Law, I think? Or it was Kendrick Law, yes. So he grabs Batty's face mask, literally pulls Brian Batty's helmet about 180 degrees sideways. Not only was there no face mask called, Against Alabama, they called Auburn for a block in the back that wasn't there. So I'm not kidding you. Yesterday, when Josh Allen was called for intentional grounding instead of Hassan Reddick for a face ma- or for a, a horse collar, I was watching that from my dorm room. I literally just laid on the ground flat on my back, and I texted my mom, "It's happening again. <laughs> it's happening again." <laughs> It, I, and I'm not kidding you. So so they get down to the end of the game, right? Auburn takes a late lead. Auburn is up 24 to 20. Alabama drives down the field. Jalen Milrow, I swear the Auburn defensive line did a horrible job of getting home. Jalen Milrow got away literally all day long. Four, it was, so after, you know, a, an Alabama penalty and a snap that went by Alabama's quarterback, Jalen Milrow, they had to dive on for like a 13-yard loss. It's fourth and goal for Bama. At the 31-yard line. And what do the Auburn Tigers choose to do? Auburn rushes two defenders. They had one linebacker as a spy. That makes three. So in theory, 
there were eight players back in coverage. If there are eight in coverage, how does somebody, how does Isaiah Bond get one-on-one in the corner of the end zone if there are eight players in coverage? If there's there's five down the field for Alabama and eight for Auburn, how does Isaiah Bond not only get one-on-one against DJ James, who is one of Auburn's best corners, but then proceeds to beat DJ James and Jalen Milrow, because he has literally all day to throw, fires a dot into the back corner of the end zone and somehow hits Isaiah Bond right on the hands and Isaiah Bond catches it in the corner for the game-winning touchdown. Maybe if Auburn's quarterback completed, if, if, if Auburn quarterback Peyton Thorne completed more than five passes in this game, I'm you not kidding. Five completions? His stat line. Yeah. You ready for this? Five of 16 for 91 yards, one touchdown, two picks. The two picks were a Hail Mary attempt at the end of the first half. So not really anything there. And the other one was when Auburn was, you know, the last play of the game, Auburn was backed up to like their own 10-yard line after Peyton Thorne almost got sacked in the end zone and lost like eight yards. Thorne throws an interception because he's trying to force something and make it happen. That was his stat line. That has been par for the course for the Auburn Tigers all year long. I don't think Peyton Thorne threw for 150 yards in a game more than like twice. I I mean, Parker watched the game when Auburn played against Cal earlier in the season. Parker watched the game with me. and I I mean, I'm sure you saw it. Their passing attack is disgusting. (laughs) It's disgusting and not in in the way that— Not in a good way. Not in the way that, like, oh, Josh Allen, like, that touchdown pass to Dakes. Oh, that was disgusting. What a throw. No, it's like, holy cow, I think I've met seven-year-olds playing peewee football who could throw better than the (laughs) Auburn Tigers could. (laughs) So Auburn loses in heartbreaking fashion to the arch-rival Alabama Crimson Tide. And now Auburn fans have to watch the two teams they despise most, Alabama and Georgia, play each other for the conference championship again. One of them, maybe two of them, are getting into the playoff again, and the Auburn Tigers at 6-6 six and six might get a bowl game, and we have to sit back and watch our arch rivals compete for championships while we're sitting at home, maybe getting a shot to play in the Duke's Mayo Bowl, the Mayo bowl. again. Woo. At least James Madison gets to bowl. James Madison Look up for James Madison. <laughs> They're not a powerhouse in the Southeastern Conference that's been terrible since 2019. By the way, How's he- Bo Nix doing at Oregon? Great, by the way, because Auburn almost ruined him. By the way, he did throw four games for over 150. His best was 282 against Sam Houston. Matt might explode. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> he might Great. Explode. Good for you, Peyton. <laughs> Are those career numbers? Because he was at Michigan State before Auburn. Uh, I, I don't feel probably like worse. that up. Probably worse. I, you don't want to look up Peyton don't Thorne's look up career, Peyton numbers. career numbers. Please don't. don't. do it to yourself. Matt. As an Auburn don't fan, I'll, I'll don't do it, do it later it to in the la- and text you It's laughing. awful. It's horrible. Losing to Alabama is the worst. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, tell I me about don't it. recommend it because we've done it every year. It's the longest winning streak LM has had over Auburn since the 70s. And I hate it. I want to go home. <laughs> I want to get off this ride. I'm done. <laughs> I was ready to start. Now you understand why. Saturday was bad enough. And then watching the Bills lose the Eagles the way they did. And the New York Knicks losing on a buzzer beater three. Matt is now standing, by the way. <laughs> I was, And I'm standing up. I literally, last night, I am not kidding you, I was ready to be done watching football for the rest of my life. After how this weekend transpired, I I was absolutely done. I, I'm so over it. War Eagle, I can't even do this anymore. Matches. I'm trying to find the tech because I do remember you saying. <laughs> yeah. I remember the group chat. I, I'm Lord, so tired why of something? It. I'm oh my so goodness. tired of it. Well, um, Oregon Washington should be a great Pac-12 championship. It's going to be a great game. You know who Oregon's quarterback is? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um. How about uh, so SMU and Tulane for the AAC, AAC championship? That's going to be a banger right there. I will say. Oh. We'll get these. Okay, so. You know who's had a great season? Missouri. I love Missouri. Missouri. Just off the cuff. Great season for them. I love Missouri. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had a great season. Tennessee lost to them. Oh, you want to talk about losses? <laughs> you want to talk about losses? You want, you want to talk about losses right now? I, you only have Anywho. two more than me. Anywho. We lost to New Mexico State. Hey, hey they are, they are 10, in Parker. the Conference USA Championship. 31-10 to we lost at home to New Mexico State. They're 10-3. They're a good team. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> we have Matt fired they up. They lost oh. by three touchdowns to New Mexico State at home. I think he's about. 
That is, he, he's going I've through. I've got to go lay in the snow. <laughs> like Parker did after the playoff game last year, yes. After the playoff game. All right. Didn't you like well, oh, yeah, I did. a snowbank after the loss of the I did, and we went back to the guys. You haven't been to a game, but Matt knows the guy's lawn. There was snowbank, and I just. Oh, that was in Mike's lawn? Yeah, it was Mike's. Mike, Mike looked at me and goes, yeah, tough loss, man, tough loss. <laughs> I just like. Dropped. I just stood in his driveway and fell face first and just laid there. Couldn't. It was not very comfortable. It was very no. cold. And my oh, friends, geez. my friends picked me up by my jacket. I was with my friends Matt and Jake, and they're like, "Come on, let's drive home." Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, oh. let's do a quick picks here because yeah, we quick. have one minute. Yeah, we love Mike. Oregon, Coach, Washington. Uh, Washington. Go Ducks. I got Washington. Rooting for you, Bo. Uh, we'll just stick to Power Five. Uh, Oklahoma State, Texas. 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 I got Texas. By the way, great to see Arch Manning get his first stock. Uh, totally. Thing. Totally. I got Texas, but I kind of want to see Oklahoma State win. I don't want to see Texas run off into the sunset to the SEC. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Uh, Georgia, Bama. Georgia, because no. I hate Bama more than I hate Georgia. I, I got Georgia. Really don't even want to watch the game, but Georgia. Go uh, dogs. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Michigan, Iowa. Michigan. Michigan. Absolute Iowa's offense right can't here. score more than five points. Yeah, but it, their defense going to let up more than five points? I don't know. Probably the, not. That that game would be and would end with a final score of like three nothing. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be like six to three. It's gonna be art. It's gonna be a six to three. Michigan's twenty three point favorites, by the way, with the over under at thirty five and a half. Yeah. True. Um, final game: Louisville, Florida State. It could low key be a really good game. I want to say Louisville, but somehow <sighs> Florida State's gonna find a way. I think it's gonna be interesting because with, you know, like like with Jordan Travis out. It's you could say, oh, you know, Louisville has the advantage. Louisville just lost to Kentucky at home. They did. They did. So it's going to be interesting. I will say real quick before we have to wrap it up because yep. the show after us has to get on. Yep. This is how uh, State gets in: Washington beats Oregon, uh, Georgia beats Bama, and Louisville beats Florida State. Michigan wins. One Georgia, two uh, Michigan, three Washington, four Ohio State. Oh, and Texas has to lose. But Ohio State yep. could make it over Texas, I think. They could. In I theory, so. they could. Also, I will say because the selection show is on new at noon next Sunday, right? I believe so. So yep. it'll be out before yep. we have our show. If Bama somehow beats Georgia and Texas wins and Texas gets in over Bama, or Bama gets in over Texas, I will be furious. And that's all I'll say. And yep, so and I will be too. Yeah, I, I would just be too. Just a little bit. Just yeah. But just with that, bit. make sure you guys tune in next week. Tune absolutely. Our yeah, championship be recap. Yes. And getting ready for bowl season. Final yes, show of the, of the semester. Yes. Yes. Thank you all guys right. for tuning Have in. Have a good night. Have a good night. It's gonna be fun. All righty. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks for talking to us.